Hello everyone, my name is Simone and I'm a sophomore at Queens University of Charlotte. And today I'll be interviewing Kirk Hooker. Kirk owns Hooker Welding Services. Kirk is also a member of AWS. AWS stands for American Welding Society. The American Welding Society's mission is about advocating the science, technology, and application of welding and allied joined with cutting processes worldwide. Hello, Kirk. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Doing great. Thank you again for um, agreeing to interview with me today. Sure. So what initially drew you to this career path? Okay, well, um, as a welder, I was, uh, I was drawn to commercial diving because of the underwater welding prospect and the excitement of welding underwater. Um, I want to take take my skills and the training that I had in welding and learn to weld underwater. So that's kind of how I ended up as a commercial diver slash welder at this point. Wow. What, um, I guess, experience or did you have someone that introduced you to underwater welding? Because that's um, so interesting. This is the first time I ever heard of that. <laughs> yeah, no, um, it was kind of just like a in the welding career, like early on in my welding training, uh, mm -hmm. the idea of welding underwater was always tossed about and it was always this, you know, kind of like a, un, an imagine, unimaginable career. And uh, I just, through welding, I kept thinking about it. And this was the early days of the internet. And I was able to do some, some uh, research and I found a, a dive school and wow. I just kind of went for it. And I signed up and went and took the training in Jacksonville, Florida. And, and that's been going on 18 years now since wow. I've been there. That's amazing. Could you describe what your typical workday entails? And then what were the first few years in this career like? Well, my typical workday kind of depends. So I'm, I do operate hooker welding service and I also work relatively full time for another company as a commercial diver. So I don't have a typical workday. <laughs> um, it's, it's ever changing. Um, if I'm, working for myself, hooker welding, I work in my shop or I do, I have a truck and I do mobile welding, um, a lot of agricultural repair type stuff. Um, as a commercial diver, I work out of the mid, mainly in the Midwest. Um, the company I work for is based out of Chicago, Illinois. And um, we service a lot of industrial facilities like steel mills, power plants, paper mills, um, hydroelectric dams, um, we do salvage work, just, we do a million different things. <laughs> and each day has always got this different set of, uh, of projects. So it's, it's ever changing. I, I don't, I just like, I can't say that I have a, a typical work day, hardly. Yes. I understand. At least your work day is busy all the time. So that's all it counts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Staying busy is good for sure. Yes. So what were the few um, first years of your career like? Are they different um, from what you do now, or is it pretty much the same? Um, the first few years in the career were, were pretty rough. You know, when you're first starting out and you're, mm. you're green and new to the industry, you got to pay your dues and <laughs> you got you to gotta take the hard knocks and do the, the jobs that, that the senior guys didn't want to do. So <laughs> I, had to, I had to prove myself from the, from the bottom up. And it was also hard um, as a commercial diver. The work is very uh, inconsistent. Or it can be, and as a new guy in the in the industry, you are quite possibly going to be one of the last guys to work. If there's eight guys that are ready to go to work, and they're they've got more seniority as a as a green greenhorn, you got less opportunity to go to work because they're going to work the the upper guys. If that makes sense. Wow. So, the first few years, you know, it's, it can be really tough to to get through, and that's honestly a lot of a lot of men and women who become commercial divers don't make it in the industry for very long. And that's part of the problem because it's the work can be scarce or sporadic and there's no, no consistency to it. So. Oh, wow. That's, that's, I, I was fortunate enough to make it and uh, still continue to do it. So I'm thankful for that. Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. What high school courses or college courses have you found to be the most applicable slash important for your occupation or what courses do you wish you should have taken? That's a good question. So the number one most important course that I have ever taken would have been my 
vocational welding class that I took in, in high school. It was uh, my junior and senior year of high school. And my, it was for three hours a day and it was split up. Like I think in uh, my junior year was in the afternoon and senior year and it was in the morning, but uh, it was a great, great opportunity to learn while at high school. I wasn't super, super book smart, if that makes sense. I'm more of a hands-on type of guy. And uh, I took that class and I had a great welding instructor who really taught me a lot about welding and, and life in general. Um, so th that easily is the most important class that I took in high school that prepared me. Um, another one, so I after high school, I, I attended a community college called Ivy Tech State College in Indiana. Um, I got an associate degree in industrial technology. Um, so I learned a lot of a lot about uh, industrial settings and stuff like that. Basically, it was geared in a guy to be um, a maintenance technician in an industrial facility. So what I'm doing now as a diver just falls right in line. Only we do it underwater a lot of times. Sometimes it's on the, not always underwater, but a lot of times it's underwater or on the surface of these industrial facilities. Um, the uh, another another class that I took when I was in uh, college was a physics class. It was just a basic intro to physics class, and I didn't I didn't get there in high school, but in college I took this course and. It was, it was a great eye opener. It really opened my mind to how everything in the world works and that there's a mathematical formula for everything that happens. And it, it really broadened my, my mind onto how, how to fix things, how to work on things about welding. Like you break it down to the smallest little particles and just, it's really interesting how, uh, how the earth works that I learned in physics. So Yes. It's kind of helped sculpt my career. I do believe that there's a lot of physics involved in diving with the, the underwater portion and physiology and your body and so on and so forth. So physics and, and math have helped a lot along the way. Um, I don't claim to be good at either one of them, but, <laughs> but I had enough, enough courses in it, you know, to, to get the wheels turning and, and put it to use in the workforce. Yes, sir. I took a physics course in high school and I understand it was very challenging, but it was so cool to learn about all the amazing stuff that lies within physics. So sure. that's amazing. Yeah, it is definitely, it's very eye-opening that the formulas and the, the math involved in it wasn't fun. And I, again, I didn't do great at it, but it still expanded the mind definitely. And Hey, look at you today. So something did work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. All the pounding that the instructors and the teachers had to do, <laughs> pounding in my head, it paid off. <laughs> yes, sir. My next question for you is, what part-time jobs, apprenticeships, slash internships, or extracurricular activities would best prepare one for this occupation? Hmm. So I will say that I grew up, personally, I grew up on a farm in Indiana, and that the work ethics that I learned from working on or growing up on a farm really helped lay a foundation for, for what I'm doing now, even though it's not closely related to commercial diving or there was some welding involved in it, but it, uh, working on a, growing up on a farm was a big, um, a big help mm -hmm. to get me going and the, the work ethics that are involved in that. Um, I also work construction, um, running heavy equipment and working down in the trenches, putting together storm and sewer pipe and water line. Um, just any types of construction work uh, that I've done along the way, including welding and doing grain elevator type stuff has really all kind of come together for my full-time career that I do now as a commercial diver and a welder. Um, it, as far as something, an extracurricular activity that I could suggest to somebody who wants to get into this line of work um i guess scuba diving isn't a bad way to get started and you can a person can not go to commercial diving school but still get a scuba diving certification and find out if it's even something you could do or be open to doing because working underwater is pretty pretty rigorous and not everybody can can do it right Wow. I have a question. So what um, dangers or situations do you have to be aware of as you work underwater? 
um, with your welding business? I'm just curious. No, that's great. Um, so we do a lot of crazy stuff. Um, I've done, uh, the underwater decompression is one of the bigger things you got to watch. Like you got to follow a set of dive tables that the U S Navy has developed. And we follow these, um, tables to the strict guidelines because you could get bent. Like if you go underwater and spend too much, if you spend an hour at a hundred foot underwater and try to come up to the surface, you're more than likely not going to make it because right. of the, the pressures of the water. So, um, you got to learn. That's one of the big dangers is decompression sickness. Um, we do a lot of crazy stuff. Like I will work in facilities and I'll go underwater into a water intake and everything we do surface supplied. So we've got a hose connected to us from the surface and I've gone 1800 feet into a tunnel underwater, drop down 20 feet underwater, find the opening and go into this tunnel with a hose, dragging a hose the whole time. So there's dangers involved in that. Um, I've done the deepest dive I've done is I've gone to 248 feet underwater breathing mixed gas, which is a helium heal. Actually, believe it or not, and it's at depth, when you're diving mixed gas, they lower the oxygen content and you're breathing gas down to 16%. And then instead of the other inert gases that we breathe here on the surface, they replace that with helium. So, and that's at 84% roughly. And those percentages vary according to your depth and the dive plan and everything. But uh, yeah, you got to really be careful when you get into that. And then you have in-water decompression as they're bringing you up in the bell. Um, there's a... Uh, there's a lot going on to it. That's for sure. Yes, I can tell. Wow. <laughs> I feel so like much. I'm jabbering about some of that stuff, but I, <laughs> no, I hope it kind of makes sense. No, it makes perfect sense. Thank you so much. Um, what are the benefits of being a member of the AWS? Okay. So I would say the, the biggest benefits are the connections I've made in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I get a, the welding journal every month, which is a publication that they put out and it helps stay in, helps me stay informed on the latest in the industry trends and new technologies and so forth. Um, another benefit. So I, uh, I'm kind of, I'm connected with the D, uh, AWS D 3.6 M to subcommittee on underwater welding and the standards that are go along with that. And I was on a project at one point, and the customer was asking about um, underwater welding below a certain water temperature and if it's prone to cause cracking in the welds. Well, with my connections at the AWS, I was able to go right to the top of the leading experts in the world on underwater welding and get some information pertaining to that. And I was able to, since I did that, since I got the information, it was a publication that they put out on that particular um, question that the customer was asking, I was able to relate that to them. And it just, it's nice to be connected with the people in the AWS and it, it's, uh, yeah, it, wow. yeah. So it so. sounds like the AWS is more family oriented, meaning you all help each other whenever someone needs help or you all bring each other quote unquote to the top with you. It's not like a dog eat dog world yeah. in the AWS. That's Absolutely. That's a good way to, good way to put it. Yeah. Everybody that is involved for the most part in the AWS, they're mm -hmm. always there to help out. And Linda, like, if you have questions, they can connect you with the people that you need to be connected with for sure. For sure. Thank you so much. Can you tell me about the networking or educational opportunities offered by AWS? I know you mentioned it in the previous question, but do you have like a specific example of a time that really helped you? Um, um, so out, aside from being a member of the AWS, I'm also a, I've got a welding certification from the AWS in stick welding, shield metal arc welding, unlimited thickness. Um, that it was a, it's a pretty rigorous test to practice for and to, uh, to pass, but I took the, took the, uh, mindset to go forward and, and get that certification for myself. And it has brought me so much work and uh, it's like a mark of accomplishment to be able to carry around your certification card and, and present that says, look at this, I'm an AWS <laughs> certified welder. Like it's, it's a pretty, pretty serious uh, accomplishment, I guess you could say for lack of a better word. 
pretty proud of it. Um, it's something that you have to maintain every six months and send in maintenance form. And uh, the AWS believes so much in what you do that you need to prove to them each every six months that you're still putting forth the effort to follow the guidelines and the criteria that they set forth. Um, so. Congratulations again, because oh, it yeah. sounds like it's a lot of work. Yeah, definitely, for sure. Um, what did you find most surprising about this career? Um, so I would say the most surprising thing that the two things that stand out to me in that question are that as an underwater welder, there's not as much money to be made in it as a lot of people, as the urban legend would tell you, like um, before becoming a, a diver, commercial diver or underwater welder, I was uh, under the conception that, oh, you, you're an underwater welder, oh, you're going to make millions of dollars and make $300 an hour. And that's just wasn't the case. Once I got into the reality of it, I, I um, put my time in to get the training, came out of the dive school and found out that the money wasn't as fantastic as I thought it was going to be, but it still provided a very good living for myself and my family. Um, the other thing that I found surprising about, kind of surprising, if you will, is that commercial diving underwater welding isn't quite as dangerous as also urban legend would lead you to believe. Um, it still has its set of dangers for sure. Um, but I, I feel like sometimes driving to work is, is more dangerous than actually working underwater, you know, with, <laughs> with traffic, you know, right. oh, yes. so it's, it is dangerous. Yes. But as, as long as everything is done correctly, it mm -hmm. doesn't have the danger there that everybody thinks. Thank you so much. That was interesting comparison. Um, my last question for you today is, is there anything else you would like to add or think would help someone considering this occupation? So as far as welding goes, I would highly recommend focusing on getting welding certifications and keeping those welding certifications current. Um, they will if constantly lead you to more work and give you a competitive edge over people without a welding certification. Um, and as far as uh, the commercial diving goes, it's something that I don't highly recommend that just everybody go and try to uh, take on as a commercial diver. However, I've been successful with it and I can't say, I can't tell somebody not to do it because I've been successful. You know what I mean? Like it's uh, it's been a hard, a school of hard knocks for sure. Um, but if, if I have, uh, yeah, so I would recommend getting certifications, welding certifications, and if possible, get into uh, a local union like pipe, the pipe fitters or iron workers, boiler makers, carpenters, pile drivers, something like that. Um, start an apprenticeship and work your way through the ropes like that. That's uh, something I definitely recommend to people. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Kirk, for taking the time out to interview with me today. And thank you all for joining us. And I hope you learned more about AWS. For more information, please visit the AWS Q Career page and find out how AWS can help you with your career development. Until next time, have a great week.